Welcome to Smart and Easy English. My name is Ben. I'm American and a native speaker from California. If you want to speak English natively and naturally, you're in the right place. You have found your channel. So be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks. This is an audiobook, or story rather. I'm going to read a story from one of our books. I'm going to read a story from this book. The benefits of an audiobook are many. Here's how to use this video. Listen for American accent training. Do shadowing, which means pause the video and repeat the sentence exactly as I said it. This will improve your accent. Listen carefully while reading along to the words. Enjoy listening to American native speaker English. Enjoy the story. See if you can understand everything. Activate the subtitles in your native language. That way you understand 100%. Listen to this story over and over, never just once. You learn and improve only with repetition. This is especially true when it comes to accent correction. Not all our audio stories include the text, so go and purchase our book so you can follow along by reading and listening at the same time. The benefits are immeasurable and, quite frankly, the only way to succeed in accent training. The Antidote I remember as a kid, my brother and I would try to emulate our father and try to drink his black coffee. But the bitter taste would make us wince and recoil. We needed an immediate antidote, a spoonful of ice cream to soothe our taste buds. Sometimes it was chocolate, other times it was vanilla. But no matter the flavor, it always did the trick, tempering the sting. Years later, I found myself studying in Italy on a study abroad program during my sophomore year in college. I was 19 and ever so eager to experience pretty much everything. It was September 1975 in Naples, a bustling city in the Campania region, that I discovered the wonders of Italian coffee. My introduction to Italian coffee was a serendipitous moment. I had been wandering aimlessly through the labyrinth streets of the city when I stumbled upon a quaint little cafe. The rich aroma of freshly brewed coffee wafted through the air, and I knew that I had to stop and indulge in the Italian tradition of a cafe. The first sip of an espresso was a revelation. The bold, robust flavor was unlike anything I had tasted before. It wasn't bitter. It was almost sweet, round and balanced, with a tinge of smokiness. This was a far cry from what was in my father's cup and what I had known coffee to be in America. Affogato, for those who are not familiar, is a dessert or beverage depending on how one chooses to indulge in it. It is a simple yet ingenious combination of two of Italy's most prized possessions, gelato and espresso. The origins of this heavenly creation are hazy, and there are many theories about its birth without a clear consensus. Some say that it was invented in a moment of inspiration by a famous Italian chef, while others claim that it was an accidental invention born out of a barista's mistake. It was in a small cafe tucked away in a quiet alley that I discovered the affogato. I noticed a group of locals ordering something that I had never seen before. It looked like a dessert that consisted of a scoop of gelato drowned in a shot of espresso. I was intrigued and decided to order one for myself. It consisted of a shot of espresso poured over a scoop of vanilla gelato. I had discovered, or rather the Italians, discovered the perfect balance of bitter and sweet in the affogato. The contrast of temperatures and textures was exquisite. As the coffee mingled with the ice cream, creating a velvety pool of decadence, I felt like I had unlocked a secret world of culinary pleasure, and I was instantly hooked. Little did I know that my childhood coffee experiment would find its way back into my adult life in the form of affogato.
I had come full circle to arrive at that moment when I was in a haze of satisfaction. As I indulged in my newfound obsession, I couldn't help but wonder about the origins of affogato. Was it a beverage or a dessert? I soon discovered that the origins of this indulgent treat were hazy at best. Some say it was invented in Turin, while others claim it originated in Venice. Regardless of its origins, one thing was clear. Affogato was a true masterpiece. But was it a beverage or a dessert? That was the question that perplexed me. It was served in a small glass, resembling a shot of espresso, but it had the creamy texture and sweetness of a dessert. Was it appropriate to drink it as a pick-me-up in the afternoon, or was it better suited for after-dinner indulgence? The answer, I discovered, was both. The affogato was a versatile treat that could be enjoyed at any time of day, depending on one's mood and appetite. As I explored more of Italy, I discovered that each region had its own take on this beloved dessert. In Florence, I found an affogato with a drizzle of chocolate sauce. In Rome, I found an affogato with a dash of amaretto liqueur. Each variation was a delight, a testament to the versatility of this simple yet sophisticated dessert. But no matter where I went, the affogato remained my true love. It was the perfect combination of coffee and dessert of hot and cold, of bitter and sweet. It was a symphony of flavors, a celebration of all that is indulgent and extravagant, yet simple. So simple that nearly any restaurant in Italy can make you an affogato, as the two required ingredients are readily available on hand in nearly all Italian restaurants. So while I may not have seen affogato on many restaurant dessert menus, I've never hesitated to ask, and they are always happy to oblige and delight. As my semester in Italy came to a close, I knew that affogato would always hold a special place in my heart. It was more than just a dessert or a drink. It was a symbol of my journey as a food lover and a traveler. It was a reminder that the most memorable experiences in life are often the simplest and most indulgent ones, and I was happy to carry this back to America with me. As I reflect back on my year in Italy, I can't help but think about this small cafe in Naples where I first discovered affogato. It was there that I fundamentally understood the canon of Italian food. Greatness is born of simplicity. It is also there that I learned to appreciate the nuances of espresso and the art of gelato. And it was there that I came full circle from a kid who couldn't stand the bitterness of coffee to an adult who had found that its antidote was best mixed with the very thing that necessitated it. The affogato had become my obsession, my greatest pleasure, my ultimate indulgence. As I sit here now, years later, sipping on a steaming cup of espresso, I smile as I think back on those carefree days in Italy. The memories of lazy afternoons spent in quaint cafes, indulging in the affogato, will stay with me forever. They are a reminder of the beauty of Italian cuisine and of the joy that can be found in the simplest pleasures.